Are we, oh, oh, we're this. going live? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. In three, two, one. We're just looking at wardrobe here. So. Just checking out some dresses. Checking out some dresses. I don't know. Because, you know, not like Michael's metrosexual at all. No, no, not little old me. But I'm Alicia Krause. I'm Michael Knowles. And this is Friday Live. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Let's first recap. Mm. Uh, there's still a buzz, or people are on Twitter, mm -hmm. over who wrote the anonymous New York Times op-ed. That's right. And I think that, uh, I, I don't know, you think that it might have been Trump himself? Could, well, I could totally see it being Trump. I'm beginning to think after Cory Booker's craziness at the mm -hmm. Senate, I'm beginning to think it was T-Bone. Might have just been Cory Booker's old friend from Newark, you know? Really? His completely fictional character. That's kind of, I'm beginning to think that's who wrote it. What, uh, what, what do we think? So, Ann Coulter had an interesting theory this week. She said she thinks it's Jared Kushner. Mm. And uh, but the majority of our fans that wrote in via uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, everything, they think that it was a New York Times and it was totally made up. Total fake news. You know, if it were Jared, it, it would have had to correspond, I think, more with when that leaked comment came out from President Trump about how he could have had Tom Brady as a son-in-law. I don't know. The timing just doesn't quite add up here. <laughs> I don't know. Or he held on to it. And yeah, he's that's like, right. He's like, he's like, I'm gonna get him back. Mm, you're I'm gonna get him not back for saying get away that. With that. Uh, Bev said on Facebook, maybe Bill Clinton teamed up with James Patterson again. <laughs> someone else said, uh, oh gosh, someone said maybe John McCain, and it was his last dig at oh, Trump before he died. Oh, that's too soon. That's too soon to make that joke. I don't know about joke. that. Uh, someone actually, this is legitimate. John Huntsman. Uh, listen, you know, I, I'm a little partial here because I, I worked for John Huntsman on yeah. his campaign. I don't think John Huntsman would have done it. Because, I mean, he, he comes from a, I, guess, I suppose, a more moderate rhetorical wing of the Republican mm -hmm. Party. But he's a loyal guy. He's a very loyal guy in all my experience with him. I don't think he would have done it. Especially after, I mean, he was loyal to Trump even through the whole Kim Jong-un, North Korea summit, all those changes oh, and yeah. stuff because he is our ambassador over there. And so I'm, I'd be kind of surprised if... And what would he stand to gain from it? You know, he's... He's, he's not going to run for president again. He's not, run, he's not running in 2020, that's for sure. He's yeah. not, you know, he's got a very important diplomatic position. I, I don't buy it. Okay, so we talked about Norm McDonald last week a little bit, unintentionally, because mm -hmm. we're both fans. I always His show is out today, right, Jacob? Mm -hmm. So the Can't show, the, uh, Norm McDonald has a show. Norm McDonald has a show. The <laughs> best title ever, I think. <laughs> Norm McDonald has a show, is now streaming live on mm -hmm. Netflix. And our question to you this week is, do you think that Netflix will end up canceling it or pulling it? Because <laughs> there's been some new hubbub with Norm McDonald this week. I mean, he's been on this media blitz. He was on The View, Howard Stern. Uh, was it Hollywood Reporter? Did an in-depth interview with him? And in that interview, he said some stuff. What did he say? So he, I knew that they were going to try to cancel his show. By the way, I don't think Norm is some rock-ribbed conservative Republican. Or I think that, I think people project that onto him because he's not a wacko lefty. But I don't. I think he, what he is is a comedian who tells mm -hmm. jokes. And which is so bizarre these days in our Nanette world where comedy isn't comedy anymore. It's supposed to be not funny. Yeah. But anyway, he, he does this interview and I knew they were going to try to cancel his show. I didn't know they would try to cancel it before it premiered. But he said, they asked him, what do you think about Roseanne Barr? And he said, oh, Roseanne's been a friend of mine for decades. She mm -hmm. gave me my first job. They asked him about Louis C.K. too, Louis C.K. Right? has yep. been my friend. He wrote the foreword to his book and he said, yep. you know, they both... They both really, you know, they apologized. Mm -hmm. They they said they were wrong. What they did was wrong, and I'm glad to see them back on their feet. Something to that effect. And he also mentioned that he thought he spoke to Roseanne the day after her tweet, and he said that she was crying and he was worried about mm -hmm. her. And he said maybe you should reach out to Louis C.K. because I haven't been through this before, but somebody like him has. Right. Maybe go to him for advice. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And that's what people are like jumping all over. They're jumping all over this, and they're you know they're they're basically just looking for an excuse. I don't, you know, I don't think, e even if he had given the interview and said, I think tuna salad is really good with mayonnaise, they would have said, Donald Trump likes mayonnaise. What a white supremacist. We got to cancel his show. For the record, I do not like mayo. What? It's gross. Wow. It's only good if it's Nazi. an aioli. Nazi. <laughs> Nazi. I'm trying to figure out what version of racism that, I don't know. That's, that's very complicated. Uh, but they're going to they're gonna try to get him for it. So and when you mean they, you mean like the SJW snowflake left. That's exactly okay. it. They don't like, I mean, you've it's got- It's not Netflix executives haven't come out and said anything. No, but- Which you, is interesting. Norm MacDonald is one of the last living comedian, er, last true comedians, mm -hmm. and he's certainly the greatest living comedian. And you got to remember, Netflix and the left have embraced Nanette. Nobody watched Nanette. I had to suffer through it. It's a comedy special where the girl says, I will not tell jokes. I'm just going to talk about my pain. And that's what comedy is now. 
which just as a matter of definitions of words, that is not what comedy is. <laughs> I always thought comedy was that behind everything there's a hint of truth and that's why it's funny. Yeah. And that's why it's awkward and that's why not everyone in an audience will be all be laughing at the same time. Ask me why I'm so good at comedy. I don't know. Timing. <laughs> why did I fall for that? Every time. Every time. <laughs> I am a blonde, folks, but I try not to be dumb, and then I just fall for that crap. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving along. Moving along. We Can't wait this, to see Norm's show. Hollywood throwdown. Mm -hmm. um, you'd like this because it's a girl fight. <laughs> <laughs> Between Deborah Messing and Susan Sarandon. <laughs> it's like the Iran-Iraq war. So they're I, want, I want them both to lose. <laughs> <laughs> they're bickering over who doesn't like Trump more. Yeah. Did you hear about yeah, that? Yeah, this one's great. So did you see the tweets? So they, they, they I sent... saw some of the tweets, but it was just like old De lady fighting, and I just wasn't that interested. Yeah, Deborah, De yeah right. De Deborah Messing, who is the weakest link in that new movie about the girl on Facebook. I don't know if I forget the name of it, but she... she searching or Searching, something? yeah. yeah, yeah. She's that the, looks intense. It's a great movie, and she kind of isn't great in it. Okay. But okay, that's, that's neither here nor there. Okay. She sends out this tweet. Obviously most known from Will and Grace, and when they did the Will and Grace reboot, she had her d little diva moment because she said that she regretted talking to Megyn Kelly. Right. Remember yeah, that? that's right. She, she, so she's this television actress. She's fine on TV. And she sent out this tweet that said, STFU. Let you guess what that one means. Mm -hmm. Susan Sarandon, you've you because Susan Sarandon famously didn't uh, endorse Hillary. She didn't like Hillary. She's a huge Bernie, big Bernie gal, fan. Not she Bernie said bro. Hillary's <laughs> awful. So she says, Susan, you because you were anti-Hillary, you let this catastrophe happen where children are now being ripped from their parents. F you. The irony, of course, is that the child policy, the child separation policy, was actually begun under the administration of Hillary Clinton's husband. <laughs> so Deborah Mez is like, hey, you didn't vote for the wife of Did the guy Susan who call started her out that. For that. I didn't see any response from Susan Ugh. Sarandon, which is probably probably and it's, the and best it's just move like you Sarandon. think that the they always say like the enemy of your enemy is your friend. Mm -hmm. So if both of them don't like Trump, then how come they're not on the same team. Well, because the, the left isn't at war with one another right yeah. now. They, people focus on the fights within the right, and there yep. are some fights. Yep. The, I mean, the left is burning itself to the ground. The Democratic Party is burning itself to the ground right now. We shouldn't lose sight of that. And it's it's a great one because it is, you're just watching them and you think like, who am I gonna root for? I'm gonna root for whoever's losing so that I can just, so that by the end it's just a pile of ash. <laughs> so it's kind of like in the, in, the, in the wokeness, you will never be woke enough. That's right. Like like you might be the less eaten, mm -hmm. but you will you be will, eaten. You will never be woken up. You, the serpent will get you. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. So our final topic this week yeah. is uh, Lena Dunham. So the hubbub Great was topic. on social media yesterday. Tess Holliday, who of course is a, probably the most famous plus size supermodel out there, mm -hmm. uh, was tweeting this company that came out with this shirt that Lena Dunham worked with this company named Revolve to do. Okay. And it was supposed to be a body, a body positivity sweatshirt that only retails for $200. Because, of course, no, it's a sweatshirt. I like po my my shopping experiences tend to be more positive when it's like twenty bucks or less. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, just throwing it out there. I, I'll go like, to those discount stores. I don't care if one sleeve is a little bit longer than the other. That's fine. Walls. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saved a lamp from the from the dumpster the other day. It's like my <laughs> Oklahoma redneck coming out. I'm like LA style dumpster diving. Yeah, you were, that was ashamed. my house, by the way. That you were <laughs> yeah, real and nice. I'm not ashamed of, of flea knock. markets and thrift stores. But, so. I would never spend two hundred dollars. If I were to spend two hundred dollars, I mean, I'd put that in a plastic surgery fund or something. Yeah, right. Anyway, right. this is a body positivity mm -hmm. sweatshirt that retails at Revolve for two hundred bucks, and they worked with Lena Dunham to style it. Yes. And she took specific messages that were negative messages directed towards famous women on social That's media. Right. So they were like troll comments. And so, she, she so, wanted to troll the trolls by creating this two hundred dollars sweatshirt. And, and this was very confusing because, like, the the one comment was, uh, "Fat isn't beautiful." It's just an excuse. Mm -hmm. And so it's a body positivity campaign that actually focuses on negativity from Twitter on a sweatshirt. There are depths of hipster meta virtue signaling that I cannot plunge. Super meta. I can't understand how far down that goes. And then the big controversy is they put... The, the Instead of putting the sweatshirt on a plus size model, they put it on like a size zero Victoria's Secret looking model. The fat shaming negativity body positivity sweatshirt didn't uh -huh. go on a fat woman, but a very, very thin woman. Which, are are we supposed to recognize size? I, I don't see size. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't see, see size. size. Mm -mm, I don't see that. Me. Like, why can't it be on a what, double you, zero person? Right? That's right. Why? Like, if you had put it on an overweight model, 
wouldn't that have been like too a little on the nose a little but, mean you know it would have been cruel yeah. right mm -hmm. like to have a I, I just don't get this, but everyone is pissed off about it, and right. I don't get it. And yeah. Lena Dunham has since apologized. The company, apparently, to pay reparations, are donating $20,000 to a charity of Lena Dunham's choice. $20,000, is that, that's like, when, when Lena Dunham wakes up in the morning and scratches her face, $20,000 falls off. That is no money to be donating. I, the thing so she's really not worse. donating it. The company that made the sweatshirt, Even with, worse. that collaborated with her, is doing it. This, the great thing about this, like the Sarandon Deborah mm -hmm. Messing fight, it is just this example of the illogic of the left just eating itself, the snake eating its own tail, just coiling down. What they do with Taylor and, Swift? Mm. Like, oh, you know, you're not feminist enough. You're not woke enough. You must speak up on every single issue. Mm, that's true. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So the question is, do you guys think that the body positivity movement is helping or hurting women? Mm hmm I, is I've, is fat beautiful or an excuse? I have I have very as the sweatshirt asks. I feel like I'm kind of not that I'm all over the place on that issue, but I feel like I do definitely have a lot of thoughts, having been fat in the last year. You know what I I I, I got uh, I know I didn't have a kid, so I didn't have an excuse for this. But I, you know, when I, one time I decided to work out and I just got fat, and because this is what happens, you eat a lot of food and then you don't want to work out at all. And because you're not the rock or Chris. Because I'm not the rock, so rock <laughs> yeah. So I do. This is like my two weeks of being fat. And the, I think the, the real way to think about this is not to think of think less of yourself, but to think of yourself less. Hmm. Like, why are we talking? Why are we talking about our bodies at all all of the hmm. time? Why are we so obsessed with our bodies? Like, move on, man. There's other stuff in the world. You know? I, I think that there's a lot of unhealthy things that have to do with body image, especially for young girls. Hmm. But it is a good question. So let us know via Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. We want to know your thoughts. Do you think that this whole body positivity movement is helpful? or hurtful, we'll be reading your responses next week when we see you for next week's Friday Live. Swarthy is beautiful. I'm Michael Knowles. I'm Alicia Krause. We'll see ya. <laughs>